so excited. Ethan, I'm really excited to chat with you today about snakes. Thank you. So why did you start Save the Snakes? That's a great question. So probably as you know, like you like snakes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, uh, I have my little snake here. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So you like snakes and I like snakes, but I bet both of us know a lot of people out there that don't like snakes very much. And snakes are really important animals. They're, um, you know, they're predators and prey. They help keep our ecosystems in balance. And so if a snake becomes threatened or endangered, like king cobras or giant garter snakes in California, they can actually uh, be a little bit tougher to save because so many people may not like them. And so our organization is founded to actually give a little bit of extra support for these animals. Why are snakes important? Yeah, there's a, many, many reasons, and uh, some might be more powerful for other people. But again, snakes are really important for maintaining balance in the food web because snakes are predators, right? So they eat, you know, rodents and birds and frogs. And so they help keep those prey populations in balance. But also, a lot of animals eat snakes. So coyotes eat snakes, um, you know, even monkeys and birds, even some insects will eat snakes. And so that helps keep ecosystems in balance. But a snake is a farmer's best friend as well. They help control those rodent populations. And really cool, snake venom is actually being used to create new medicines that help people. So there's a lot of ways that snakes are really important. Should we be afraid of snakes? I think it's important to respect any wild animal, you know, especially when we're out and about looking, you know, whether we're bird watching or enjoying, you know, a nice hike on the trail. But it's really important to give snakes plenty of space. They're not out to get us, right? They're uh, usually pretty not interested in humans whatsoever, especially here around California. All of our snakes are mostly pretty small. They don't want to eat us, and they just want to go about their business. So if you ever see a snake in the wild, give them pr plenty of space, and there's nothing to fear. What should we do if we encounter a snake? That is a, another great question. So... If you see a snake out in the wild, it's best just to give them plenty of space. And so take, you know, 10 steps, 30 steps back, and usually the snakes will just go about their way, or you can just go around them if they're out in the middle of like a hiking trail. Now, if you see one that's like in your yard or maybe in your garage or something like that, like I've actually helped people remove rattlesnakes from their homes. And so what, um, in those circumstances, you can actually use a broom or a long, you know, like a rake to gently kind of get the snakes out. Or you can call your local um, like wildlife center or animal control and even sometimes save the snakes. So people have called us and we've removed the snakes for people. And really important, it's best to be prepared. If you live in snake country, especially rattlesnakes, it's good to know what snakes are potentially dangerous or venomous. Like here in Sacramento, we have one rattlesnake that's potentially dangerous to humans. And if we know what that snake is, then we're pretty prepared when we encounter some of the other snakes, like our king snakes and garter snakes. How can we help snakes? There's a lot of ways that people can help snakes. And one is just to have a little bit of compassion for these animals. Um, because snakes are the most cuddly, the most cute. And so sometimes it can be a little bit hard to uh, you know, even want to help them. But really is, again, they're so important for the environment. And just like other animals, they deserve our respect and appreciation. So we can encourage people, our friends, our family, not to kill snakes. Because we want those snakes to go out and be a part of our, you know, our biodiverse planet and be a part of the food web. And we don't want to kill them if we don't have to, right? And so there's other ways that people can help snakes. So they can help clean up a snake habitat. So doing river cleanups along you know, rivers in their area um, or other places where snakes might be in a uh, like a wetland or a pond, uh, just keeping it nice and tidy because snakes actually do get stuck in trash and things like that. And just learning more about snakes and how to help them by visiting savethesnakes.org. We have a lot of tips about how people can help snakes in their neighborhoods. Cool. So very cool. Did you have any more questions for me? No. Well, That's can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, first, where are you guys based? What part are you in California or in other parts of the United States? Uh, we're in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's the capital. Nice. Do you guys see snakes often? 
Uh, occasionally, not super often, but occasionally. Actually, where we used to live, we had a snake under our house. Nice. He named he was a black rat snake. My parents actually named him Leroy. Leroy the black rat snake. That's a good one. Yes, what I you... actually do have oh. one more. Nice. What type of snake do you think this is? Because I don't know. <sighs> that is a good question. Um, I'm going to say that's a, um, a, a green striped wood snake. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard. So I have a snake like that at home too. It was actually made in Guatemala and it's, it could be any snake, but um, yeah, they're just sort of, I would maybe guess it's similar to a garter snake because it has the stripes. Uh, so that would be my guess. Yeah. And then Ethan, do you have a favorite snake? Uh, yeah, I do have some. Yeah, I what's like your favorite? Probably my favorite will probably be a speckled cobra. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I like them because of the way they look. They're real yeah. pretty. Yeah, cobras are some of my favorite snakes too, but I'm really partial to rattlesnakes just because we, you know, have them locally. So, yeah. Here too. We have them oh, yeah. here too. Yeah, you guys have the timber rattlesnakes? Yeah, actually. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we also really young. We did see uh, what was the bit Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes oh. one time during when we were on vacation at Florida. That's a really cool snake. It's actually our largest rattlesnake uh, in the world. Uh, it's one of the heaviest vipers in the in the world too. Not the heaviest, but up there. Um, and both them and timbers are actually in need of some help. They're uh, they're becoming more and more endangered the diamondbacks are endangered and timbers in some states are endangered i'm not sure if they are in kentucky but uh yeah really cool snakes but um you know a lot of people don't like them so we need more snake savers out there to help them out yep yeah. yes the way i think of snakes i like them i think they're pretty and i think we deserve to share this world and i'm not gonna hurt them the only time that I would hurt a snake is if it had already hurt me. That's the only time I would even consider it. But otherwise, I'll just leave them alone. Well, I can actually give you some uh, helpful advice. We So we teach people about what to do when they see snakes in our um, uh, handling courses. And when someone gets bitten by a snake, uh, like a rattlesnake, we actually encourage them, don't touch the snake. Um, because you actually might get bit again. And so it's best, you know, if you're bitten by a snake, you know, get in touch with an adult, you know, your parent or friend. And so you can get to a hospital and call 911 right away. Because the best thing to do is if you're bitten by a rattlesnake, it's to get straight to a hospital to get bitten mm -hmm. venom. Heck, one for every snake, because until you can, unless you know that it's not a venomous snake, you should definitely should always. And heck, even if you know it's not a venomous snake, I would always make sure that it's not. I'd yeah. Rather, I'd rather not take my chances. Yeah, it's important to know your snakes too. But I think I think you have a pretty good handle on your snake IDs, but it's still always good to be careful. Um, and sometimes I've actually noticed, especially uh, as I've gotten older, I kind of like if I see a snake on a trail, I like to watch it. I actually don't like to go and pick them up or just to see what they're doing. And I've seen snakes do some really neat things like go out and look and hunt lizards or they go and find like a snake girlfriend, which is kind of fun to see. And just to see that behavior is a lot more rewarding than actually just picking them up. Um, I, yeah, typically I'm a snake watcher these days, not a snake grabber. <laughs> yeah, we actually helped kind of save the snake thanks to a pinata stick that we found that we had in our car. Oh. <laughs> There was one that was sitting in the middle of the road. Yeah. And even when we tried to get it to just slither off itself, it wouldn't go away. And it, yeah. and it also got a bit, pretty much a handful of the pinata paper off the pinata stick. We were trying to push him off the road is all we were trying to do. We yeah. Were, yeah. Like lead him off the road, but he turned so, around and bit the stick. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to get him off the road. <laughs> yeah, some it's so funny. I've I've encountered a lot of snakes like that too on the road, and right, and sometimes they won't move. You know, they're heating up on those roads and getting nice and warm, 
And sometimes snakes rely on camouflage first before they get defensive. And so even if they're on a road, they're like, maybe they don't see me <laughs> and they'll stay yeah. there and not move and not move. And then, you know, secondly, snakes like to put on a big show, right? They're big bluffers, uh, like rattlesnakes to rattle and a bull snake will hiss at you and things like that. And then lastly, you know, if they feel really threatened, they'll strike. But yeah, yeah. snakes are funny that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But thanks for being snake savers as well, because a lot of them get squashed on the roads. So that's a, yeah. actually a, a very great way to help snakes to just help them get off the roads. Yeah, we were afraid it was going to get ran over. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. He eventually decided, well, oh, darn it. <laughs> These people are going to keep poking me with a pinata stick, trying to get me off the road. I might as well listen to him. And we did really <laughs> kind of just pushed him a bit. Well, like, yeah. Nudged yeah. him, trying to get him to. Heck, even first, we didn't even touch him Ooh. with the yeah. pinata stick. We just at first just kind of got closer <laughs> and tried to scare him off. They wouldn't go. Yeah. Having a nice finally, long stick can help for sure. Finally, he decided, well, darn it. It's starting to get colder. Might as well find another nice spot. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, super cool. Well, yeah. Um, we're, do you guys have any more questions or I'm happy to sit and chat? Like, I'm, this is a really unique kind of thing for us. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah, I don't have any more questions, but I would like to chat a bit about snakes. Sure. What's your favorite type of snake? That's a good question. I'm I really like rattlesnakes, and I'm not sure which one's my favorite. Um, it, it might be our northern Pacific rattlesnakes, which are like actually this is uh, what they look like. Um, yeah, they're really pretty, and so and I I've grown up with them here in in Sacramento. And I, and I apologize because I didn't realize you guys were in Kentucky. Some of my answers were a little bit, uh, you know, focused to where I'm from. Um, but uh, yeah, I just really like our rattlesnakes. They're, they're really interesting animals. Uh, and I just think it's really cool that they have a rattle on their tail. That's um, really unique in nature to when we see adaptations like that. And I also like to tell people rattlesnakes are the most polite snake on the planet because they let you know that they're there before you step on them so mm -hmm. yeah so i'm very partial to them uh, but i've you know i'm very fortunate i've seen some pretty amazing snakes in the world i've been to india and i've seen king cobras so they're the largest venomous snake in the world uh you know the individual that we saw was 15 feet you know that's like half of the size of a school bus uh it's pretty uh pretty incredible to see an animal that big in the wild and a snake because you know you think of a snake and you think they're so small and then you know, these things are massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know there was actually a prehistoric snake? It wasn't exactly dinosaur times. It was after dinosaur times, kind of. It wasn't, I say, during the Ice Age, but it wasn't uh, during the time with the dinosaurs. It was kind of mm -hmm. in between. It was called the Titanoboa. It was gigantic. I do know about the Titanoboa. Uh, that is a very exciting, um, you know, discovery that that snake existed on our planet. It was uh, massive. I mean, I think they got 40 feet long. Probably, I mean, we don't even really know. Yeah, uh, because, well, we do know that they did get bigger than uh, the largest modern day snake. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which is very big. Yeah, and I probably would be a little scared to see a snake that big. So, yeah, <laughs> Me yeah, too. and I'm sure as you know, um, paleontologists and scientists dig up more Earth on the planet. I'm sure we'll find really exciting snakes that might be bigger or just more interesting. And um, yeah, it's really fascinating the way snakes have kind of evolved through time. But they've been around on our planet for a long time, mm -hmm. more than we have, even. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah, but humans and snakes have been, you know, they really have been um, kind of side by side throughout history. And there's so many interesting tales about snakes and different cultures around the world have their own superstitions and myths about snakes. So they're, everyone has an opinion about snakes. That's, that's the truth. I actually have a question. This sure. is just something I've been wondering about. 
do the king cobras sprout their spines or is that just their skin that they're spreading out when they make the hood yeah king cobras actually flatten their spines out so where they what they do is by they flatten just that that hood right and so there are actually bones out there um that flatten so yeah so it's not just skin. I, and that's how the reason that other snakes can't widen it out is because they don't have those bones that push out the skin right yeah it's an adaptation in cobras but we do see like hooding behavior in other types of snakes too um even to an extent um there's a snake sort of near you i don't know if they get into kentucky i don't think so uh indigo snakes maybe in florida you learned about them the eastern indigo yeah and that way that's actually another way that they're they have a lot of lines of defense before biting right like for as they spread out that hood and they're trying to make themselves look a lot bigger than they actually are so the pearl cut or wherever they think is gonna hurt them will yeah. get scared off yeah snakes use a lot of different ways to kind of you know confuse predators or um you know try and intimidate predators and the, the hooding is a great example but also sound i mean if you've ever heard like an angry bull snake you know it's a uh, it's intimidating too. They just, they hiss and make that loud noise, but a lot of snakes hiss as a way of uh, defending themselves to say, you know, back off, stay away from me. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed pretty much all the snakes, their last line of defense is biting. Yeah. There, um, there's actually a famous uh, um, a herpetologist named Whit Gibbons that had the perfect quote for this. And he said, first snakes are cowards. Second, they're bluffers, and lastly, they're warriors. And it's it's so true because a snake really, you first see a snake, they're trying to blend in their surroundings, they try and not draw attention. But then secondly, they put on this big, big show and just try and get you, you know, to stay <laughs> away. And then lastly, you know, they'll do anything they can to survive. Um, yeah. Like fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, do king cobras have friends? Because I they, know that they, yeah. So adult king cobras don't have too many predators outside of man. Um, you know, I mean, imagine, you know, they really are big, right? So, you know, these large snakes can get 12 to the record, I think is 18 feet long. Um, and so there's not too many animals that will mess with them. Um, however, before they're like full grown adults, um, there's a lot of things that will eat them. Um, actually other snakes, so king cobra, eats snakes um but there's other types of snakes that will eat them as well um crates are another one and diff different cobras will try and eat them as well mongooses i'm sure you've heard about them that you know ricky ticky tabby if you've ever read that story um and then monitor lizards those are pretty good at eating cobras and other snakes as well so they they do have quite a few predators and that's why we don't really know much about baby king cobras like because they hatch out of the eggs in the nest right because king cobras are the only snakes that make a nest and they actually make a nest they incubate their eggs and sorry i'll say that we know of because there could be a snake that doesn't we just haven't found out yet um but after they hatch it's sort of assumed that king cobras go up in the trees because adults are on the ground but um, babies, they live in a big, scary world, and there's big predators on the forest floor. So the little babies go up high into the trees, and we don't really know much about them, what they do there. So it's a good opportunity for future scientists to learn more about these amazing snakes. Yeah, snakes are really best appreciated in the wild. And if you have a place near you where you can see them, it's a pretty special experience because snakes are so secretive. It's, uh, it's truly kind of a it opens up a world uh, when you see them in their natural habitat because yeah, they're very mysterious animals. Mm -hmm. And another reason that they don't really attack as much as people exaggerate is because it takes them a long time to reproduce the venom. Um, kind of. So actually I can provide some information on that. So most snake bites in the United States and probably the world are accidents. So it's actually a very small amount are people who are like disturbing or messing with snakes. Um, it's people they're walking on their, you know, outside without a, a flashlight at night. 
it's people who reach into a wood pile, it's hikers, it's, um, you know, they're usually just accidents, you know, people not aware of the snake and they get a, a bite as a result. Um, but sometimes you do have people that, you know, pick up a snake and then they get bitten as a result. Um, but yeah, so that, that venom isn't meant for humans because it's not meant to be defensive. It's meant to be um, for their prey, right? To, to stop prey. Because when a, for example, when a, a, a rat uh, passes by like a rattlesnake, you know, they need to mobilize the prey. They need to stop it as soon as possible because a snake can get injured from a rat or, you know, some other animal like a bird or something. And so it's meant to just completely stop the prey and then it can have an easy meal. Um, it doesn't do that for us. Like we don't, you know, instantly die when we're bitten by a snake. In the United States, there's some very venomous snakes in other parts of the world that you you need to get to a hospital as soon as possible. Um, but like our, our North American pit vipers, like, you know, our timber rattlesnakes and others, um, it just, you know, it really impacts us and you can die from it, but it it's not that number one purpose. And so some snakes actually like a rattlesnake might bite and it actually doesn't deliver any venom. It's just a defensive bite. Sometimes they call it a dry bite. So no venom. Um, however, anytime someone is bitten by a, a snake um, and they think it's a venomous snake, they need to go to a hospital because the longer you wait, the more damage uh, venom can do in your body. So you don't want to wait to see if symptoms are occurring. Mm -hmm. Hey, I noticed that... Where's in those little cages in the back? <laughs> so this is our our humble little office uh, where we keep our collection of snakes. Um, and if you want, I can actually show you one of our snakes because he'll put on a good show if you want to see him. Oh yeah. So we have um, a, a little collection of snakes we use for education programs. Um, like I think maybe you can see this guy right here. Um, do you see a little head popping up? Yep, I see him right beside the window. Yeah, that's a rosy boa. Um, and so that's just a, a non-venomous boa that we have in California. But then we have some larger things. Hey, buddy. Can you see him in the back? A little hard to see. What is your screen showing? Yep, in the I back there. Him. Is that a diamond back? Because I see a bit of a diamond pattern. It is a diamond back. So this is a Western diamondback. And so he's, um, he's kind of a famous, he's not a famous rattlesnake, but he's, he's famous around here. Um, he's a, a very large Western diamondback. Um, I can actually show you his, his shed. It starts way up there. That's his skin that he sheds. Ends wow. down somewhere. Yeah. He's um, five feet long. So five feet, three inches. And he's... Um, He's a really useful uh, tool for education for our programs because uh, he's, yeah, just a, a really impressive animal, but he kind of helps people see and learn about rattlesnakes and how to be safe and living around and working around them. So we have a few rattlesnakes here, and then we have some non-venomous snakes as well that are part of our education programs. Yeah. Awesome. That's pretty much all we can think of to chat about. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, the perfect time, you know, uh, it's been a pleasure to chat with all of you and have this uh, opportunity. You had some great questions. So it was exciting to, yeah, get to learn more about, you know, your passion for snakes. And then hopefully this video can help, you know, educate some people about snakes. Thank you. Yeah. I had a good time talking with you today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ethan.